for a second time, I want to look at the passage in Joshua 24, Joshua's farewell address to the people of Israel when he says, As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Great statement there that we already looked at that indicates I need to worry about my own heart first. I need to be where I should be. I cannot lead anybody as a father, as a as a husband, as an influencer of any kind, as a minister, I can't lead anybody to where I'm not. I cannot bring people spiritually or point them to something I know nothing about. So he says, as for me, I'm going to serve the Lord, and my house is also going to do that. So <clears throat> he recognizes there this sacred, and I can't emphasize enough, this sacred and solemn responsibility that I have to so live with my wife and before my children and those of, in my inner circle in such a way that I help them on to God. I don't ever want to stand at judgment day with the responsibility that I have somehow led them astray or if not led them astray just didn't lead them in the correct way. So by Joshua saying this, he establishes that he's fully aware. I have a solemn responsibility to God to whom I will give account. So as a husband, as a father, how can we say, and how can I fulfill the responsibility to be able to say, as for my house, we're going to serve the Lord. The best thing, of course, is keep my own heart exactly where it belongs with God and don't drift away toward, toward my wife. We could go on forever here. There's much that needs to be said. Um, the Bible makes it very clear. Husbands, you love your wives like Jesus loved the church and died. He died for the church. I, And that is not just idle words. That's not something that God said in the scripture just because he couldn't think of anything else to say. When he said, you love your wives like Jesus loved the church, that is a command. It's not advice. And Peter makes it very clear, if you don't do that, your prayers will be cut off, meaning God won't even let you come into his presence, which, which means he's paying attention. So love your wives, not lord it over them. Pray with them. Pray for them. Follow the Holy Spirit in his um, whispering to our heart, if he invented marriage, then he knows the best way to uh, treat your wife so that she is a helpmate to you and you're a helpmate to, to uh, her and you are together helping each other on to God and walking with God. A home like that is a little bit of heaven to go to heaven in. Then... If the blessing of children are in our lives, the responsibility <clears throat> there is very great. And it is probably four things towards our children. Number one, precept, which means formal teaching. We need to specifically talk to our children according to their age level and their capability about the things of God. Driving down the road when they're little. little. Who made the moon? Um, who made the birds? Who made the sky? God did. Keep God in front of them. Teach them. The Bible says when you walk in the road, when you sit at home, teach them, teach them, teach them. Talk to them about God. Second, <clears throat> there is not only after precept, there's pattern. I can obliterate every single solitary thing I have tried to teach my children by failing to set a pattern of godliness for them. I can teach them all kinds of stuff about God, and it may very well, I not trust, would be true. But if I, if I contradict it by the pattern of which I live in front of them, it's, it is on me. That's another thing to be horribly... Um, fearful of, to ever stand before God, that I've set a bad pattern. 
So by the way I live, the way I react, the way I function under pressure at home, all of these things for my children set a pattern for them of what it means to be a Christian. Then there's the issue of a, a, a third method in teaching my children penalty. Now, I don't mean beating children, and I don't mean just, you know, uh, some kind of abuse. But we are to bring our children up in the nurture and discipline of the Lord. Now, that means under the eyesight of God. I am to discipline my children as God disciplines us. God doesn't let things slide with us. He will talk to us. If we are wrong, he will let us know. Um, he's kind and he's good and he's faithful and he's merciful and he restores us. But at the same time, he will not brush it off and just say, oh, well, it's okay. I am to be faithful there because what I'm really doing when I am um, even punishing my children, I am training them for the day when they hear God's voice and maybe beyond my voice but they hear God's voice and are taught to listen to it. This is God, and I must obey him. So there's precept, there's a pattern, there's penalty or punishment when that becomes necessary. Most of all, too, is fervent, consistent, daily prayer. The only access, this is not an original thought with me, but the only real access I have to the hearts of my children, especially as they reach the age of accountability, begin to grow, begin to mature, begin to kind of get on their own a bit and think they know everything. Less and less sometimes they'll listen to my voice. The only access I have to them then is through prayer and God reaching their hearts. So we must be people of prayer every day for our children. So teaching them, setting a good example before them, training them and disciplining them when that's needed, and fervent, constant prayer. Only with those true in our lives can we say with Joshua, as for me and for my house, we will serve the Lord. Father in heaven, those are, you know, such great words from Joshua. You inspired them to be written down for us. Help us follow them and help us put them into daily practice. In Jesus' name, amen.